but I feel like her and Olivia Rodrigo would be good friends. I think our first fitting must have been like seven hours or something crazy. It had to be violent because otherwise it doesn't work. That's what I learned. <laughs> I wanted to give you guys your flowers. So oh my gosh, this movie is beautiful. And yeah, congratulations, guys. Thank I've you. really loved it. There is a scene in this movie where you so smoothly, so effortlessly snap a rose and put it in Rachel's hair. Yeah. Mm. And I wondered if today oh. you could try and recreate. Is he going to snap it? He's allowed to snap it? He's allowed to snap it. So that. let me just preface this by saying. It looks smooth in the movie because we get the luxury of multiple takes. Yeah. In real life, I am not necessarily oh, a smooth rose there snapper. There are so many remember? versions of it. So many outtakes like, out there where I where I break it and it like is hanging off and I and I still put it in. And it's just like, <laughs> and it's just like and hanging that, yeah. down. We've Rachel's had to face. do many. Okay, let's try this. Ready? Let's see. Um, okay. It had to be violent because otherwise it doesn't work. That's what I learned. Okay. And then, a little, do you mind? No, it's okay. It's gonna fall. No, it's okay. It's gonna, You're doing great. Like, you like, know, I don't have my it. hair down today. Okay, I'm just gonna hold it there. No, there you. you there you go. Hey. Very smooth. Very, very smooth. <laughs> and of course, we have to give you your flower oh, too. Oh yeah. Guys, oh, congratulations. Thank you so much. I want to see you doing it. Cheers. Now. Cheers. The world building in these movies is so immense. So I wanted to ask, was there a moment during filming, maybe on set, where you were like, I'm in a Hunger Games movie right now? Like, when did it hit you? That I had two moments when we went into the arena with all of the other mentors and tributes. Something about standing there, the scale and vastness of that arena, it's absolutely breathtaking. <laughs> that and when we went over to uh, District 12, it was extremely industrial and it was a lot of like abandoned steel mills and stuff like that. Mm. It, was, it was all practical, everything. There was such minimal green screen. It was really, really crazy. And it was spectacular fuel to be able to use. I've waited a long time to ask you this. What is the come on story? Oh, yes. Okay, so I was talking about this on social come on. media. Come on. That one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> from, Go on, you can tell it. From our reshoots. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Um, from our reshoots, we, you know, a, a majority of our shooting was on location, and there were a lot of planes, helicopters at all times. Um, and every time they would say, clearing for a plane, and then Tom pretended it was his job to clear the plane, and he would look up and go, come on. <laughs> can you do it? Yeah, you know, it was like a plane, like, come on, <laughs> come on. For some up. reason, yeah. it always really tickled me. And I want to talk a bit about Tigress's style, because she really has that pageantry of the capital from the previous movies. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know, what was that process like for you? Was it collaborative at all? Because I know you're creative, and how important was it to signify that she was going to be this trendsetter? I mean, it, it was really fun, because I do love fashion deeply, and, uh, and um, Trish, uh, the costume designer, was also amazing uh, and super down to just like play. Like I think our first fitting must have been like seven hours or something crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, like she was down to hear my opinions. We played with the, she sourced all this crazy jewelry and buttons and uh, got, we got to play. It was really playful, which yeah. was fun. I also noticed that your sister is in a scene with you. Yeah. So what was that like and how badly did you want to recreate the I volunteer as tribute scene with oh her? Oh my <laughs> gosh, it was it was so wonderful. She's such a huge fan and she had read the book before I did and, and told me that I had to do this movie when the book came out and Francis remembered that I had told him that story back when we were first initially speaking about the possibility of me being in the film and said, you gotta get your sister out here, we gotta do it. And she had never come to work with me before, so she doesn't didn't really know what my days looked like. And it was just so fun, you know, Sherry Lawrence let her come in the makeup trailer, do her makeup, and Nikki Gooley did her hair, and, and she came to set that day. And she was such a trooper, she did a great, she did a great job. She was and so she's, sweet. Yeah, she's so thrilled too. It's, it's her favorite franchise. It's, Francis is one of her favorite directors, so, it was a big moment. I've yeah. been joking that at least one of the Zegler sisters showed up and was professional. <laughs> so rude. I did the my disrespect. best. Disrespect. I wouldn't say if it, From if this it's side true. of the room. <laughs> and obviously, I mean, Sejanus is so beloved by fans of the book, as I'm sure you know. Um, and he goes through it, to say the least, in this yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, to say the least. To say the least, no spoilers. <laughs> but um, what was it like for you to play a character who has, you know, such a strong moral compass? He's very all or nothing. It was a lot of fun. Something I really liked about. Uh, you know, like you said, he's got he's got his convictions. He's very passionate about them, and it was kind of nice because throughout most of my scenes, I was always constantly at odds with somebody. You know, either like the majority of characters on set that day, or the individual I was to, I was almost always having some sort of disagreement due to my convictions, which was really really fun. As you know, as an actor, it's really fun to have a healthy amount of friction. You don't want everything to be going well all the time. You know. 
Um, so it was nice. And there's a lot of traits about him I really admire, you know. I think he's the kind of person that the average audience member or reader, you know, wants to, that's who you see yourself as, the person who's telling everybody, like, this isn't, this is not good, you know. Yeah. Now, we have to talk about Snow. Tom, yeah. you captured this rise and well, descent into power so seamlessly. You know, that kind of metamorphosis that he has throughout the film. Yep. So. What was it like for you to immerse yourself in such a complex character? Yeah, um, I don't want to say it was it was like super heavy and dark because I, you know our acting job is fun. Mm -hmm. We get to do something really fun for a living. Um, but it, it definitely was psychologically a little heavy. Um, there's obviously the question that I think a lot of people have, which is like, why is he the kind of protagonist in this film mm. um, when he's such an antagonist in the other films? And I think it's because we get to lift the lid on like why he became like that, um, which is exciting. It's like fun to see, it's fun to look into someone that you can't really understand and a character that you don't relate to and kind of ask yourself like why and also like ask yourself if I went through that, could I become that, you know? Um, yeah, I think for me it's like the reason why these films are so exciting to people, which is yes, they're big and they're entertaining and a lot of action, um, but they're also kind of philosophical and they have a lot of meaning to them and they leave audiences thinking. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You both work very closely with Tom in the movie, and I feel like both of your characters really bring out so much of who he is. So did you have a favorite scene that you got to do with him? Our first scene we ever filmed was when he, uh, you know, he comes to the arena to come and uh, rescue Sejanus from some shenanigans, <laughs> we'll say. And um, that was the first scene we shot, which is very, very heavy. And that was, I think, both of our first filming, and we, you know, it was it was kind of funny because we didn't get to do a chemistry read, so we don't know. And Tom is such an amazing collaborator and wonderful actor, so it was, it was such a breath of like, oh, this is gonna be great. Mm -hmm. Like, this is gonna be so great. Um, so that's probably my favorite. We also started with a really, it didn't, this scene didn't make it into the movie, but it's a really like heavy hitting, like crying. We're both. Yeah, like going there, and that was our first, that was my first day of filming and my first scene with him, um, which was amazing, just like technically, he's a he's an incredible actor. Um, so I felt like in amazing company. But favorite was probably like, I don't know, going up and down the stairs of like the building or something, just because we got to be outside and it was mm -hmm. fun and stuff. And I mean, we don't get to see your characters interact in the movie, but I feel like they're both very similar, and I feel like they really, you know, like each other. So what do you think if they sat down together, they would make of one another? How do you think that conversation would go? Oh my gosh, I don't know, that's a good question. I feel like we would buy. We probably would. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what they would, like, talk about, if aside from, like, uh, we have good morals. <laughs> yeah, know? we'd probably just sit there on our little pedestal and be yeah. like, these guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I really want to talk about the invisible string that Lucy and Katniss have together because yeah. there are so many nods to her right. throughout the movie, be it like the iconic bow or the Katniss by the lake that it's too early for, Yeah. the hanging tree. Yeah. Uh, so what was it like to kind of explore that tether that the two of them have together? I just really think Suzanne it was so careful in the details between both characters and, and making sure that the parallels were s slight enough that audiences didn't immediately go, that's a nod to the originals, mm -hmm. but still there for the true fans to be so thrilled to see a nod to them. Um, I really loved the, the too early for Katniss. I, I thought that was such a great line yeah. that was in there and um, I just think that and even like in, in my my corset at the reaping like her mother's dress has um, snakes and then it has primrose flowers and catniss flowers on there as a nod so so Trish really did a lot of that but yeah. everybody really embraced those parallels because you need to create a character that's going to uh, that's going to have elements of her in Katniss mm -hmm. so that you're haunted by Lucy Ray for yeah. the rest of time. Yeah. And so you wanted him to look at Katniss if you go and revisit the original books, the original films, and see Lucy Gray in her place. And so that was really, really fun. Which is actually going back to your previous question as well that kind of speaks to that, which is she's his kind of kryptonite, right? Yeah. She's his, um, his like Achilles heel, which is what makes him end up 
hating Katniss so much because I think she reminds him of Lucy Gray, which is like his lost love, you know? Yeah. 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 Can't escape her. Mm. Can't, can't escape, escape her. Yeah. She follows him through history. <laughs> can't catch me now. Can't catch me now. Mm. Plug. An amazing yeah, song. An amazing song. So song. good, right? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. What do you think Lucy Gray would make of the song? Oh, she'd love it. She'd love it. I feel like her and Olivia Rodrigo would be good friends. Yeah. yeah. Is there a song that you would put on your character's playlist? Ooh, that's fun. Can it be like modern, even though they probably don't have like yeah. modern music? I mean, mine's like, I don't know. I, the, I I need to think of a better one than this, but I used to make the joke a lot where like Sejanus is constantly in the realm of like, all around me are familiar. <laughs> Yo, know? He's like, exactly. He's constantly just brooding yeah. around. Yeah. I kind of like the idea that Tigress would listen to like really hardcore techno. So I would probably say like, uh, like a DJ set from my favorite DJ Kilborn right now. I saw this morning that you and Rachel were giving each other little love notes on set, which was adorable. <laughs> so cute. Have you guys kept them? I have like a hoarding thing when it comes to like cards and, and little notes, that, so I'm sure I got it. And like, I have like a big uh, file that I put all my mom's cards and like all the cards that I get. It's like super thick. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Maybe make a scrapbook someday or I something. I always feel so guilty if I try yeah, to throw a card you can, away. You, you know, know? Yeah. It's, it feels it feels bad. Yeah. I don't know. If she kept a, she kept that one. If I remember correctly, it was less of a love note and more of like a silly drawing. Um, she wanted me to draw her as a flower, so I just drew a flower and put a little face on it, and that was. It was it was very crude. I'm not an artist. That's adorable. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure she kept it. I'm sure she kept yeah. it.